Alright guys, so in this video we're going to talk about the work plane, as I've threatened to a number of times already in this uh, series. So for that, uh, I have went ahead and hit the O key and went to my options here, and I set the work plane to always. Usually I have it set to active, but for this one we'll set it to always so we can talk about it, okay? So first things first, in the documentation, uh, and I didn't mention in the last video in Action Centers and the notes, I've got a link here to a very, very nice in-depth video on Action Centers if you want to know everything there is to know about Action Centers, okay? And if in this video, I've got a link for uh, a video in-depth on the work plane too. And these are put out by the Foundry and they're excellent, so I recommend those. So in this video, we're just going to uh, do a um, high-level overview of the work plane, just so you can understand how that works, okay? So the work plane is uh, this construction grid here. Um, and it can be aligned to anything in the scene. Now, if you activate your work plane, it reorients the world space coordinates of your scene. So if I have this robo leg here selected and I hit, and I make a off axis polygon selection, I hit shift home key, or I go up to the, here, the work plane button, and I say align work plane to selection. Now see what's happened down here is it's actually realigned your X, Y, and Z coordinates. Okay, um, this is how it achieves uh, you know what it does uh, and uh, your tools will respect that so if I bring up the move tool rotate and scale so um, not just those tools all your tools here will align themselves to the work plane because these now are your new world space coordinates so if I hit zero on the numeric pad to oh it looks like I've uh, cleared it in this layout um, but what that'll do is that'll bring up your model quad okay um, you can go hit control space bar and then say left view okay or rather, let's go to front. Okay, you can see what's happened here. You, it hasn't actually rotated your your objects, but to keep your your X, Y, and Z straight here, it's uh, in your orthogonals. It's just change your world space coordinates. So control space bar. Let's go back to perspective, or you can click up here to get your views. Okay. Um, so, anyways, let's hit the end key to reset the work plane. Okay, now it's snapping back to our normal X, Y, and Z. All right. So now that we know. Uh, kind of what it does behind the scenes. Let me show you what it actually does for us um, and how to set it up. Okay, so what we did was we made a polygon selection and we went up to align work plane to selection. The hotkey for that is shift home. Okay, shift home. Now if I hit the end key, it will reset the work plane. Okay. Um, now if I have no components selected and I'm hovering over a component and I just hit the home key, it's going to basically quick align to the normal of that uh, of that selection. Okay, and if I hit the E key and I go action center origin, this will show you that oops. Uh, this will show you that it's actually moved the origin of your scene as well. Alright, so to better better illustrate that, let's select these polys again and hit shift home. And it's going to average the work plane to those selections and move the origin of the scene to the center point of uh, the average of that selection. So if I hit zero, or I'm sorry, the E key to bring up the, uh, the your different tools, you can see what it's done here. The move tool shows it best. It's moved the origin. That's now zero, zero in your scene. Okay. So just be aware of that. So like, for example, if I, uh, with the work plane active, I uh, make a cylinder. Okay. We'll hold control to constrain it. It's going to make a, in our instance there, it's going to make it. Now, if I select those polygons and I go over here to basic, center selected all see that it's moved it's moved that to the origin so that's zero zero now okay it's center of the scene all right let's go ahead and delete those polys all right so i think you guys get what i'm saying there um so th those are your main things there's other options here offset you can physically type in an offset you can physically rotate it uh, manually you know blah 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 but honestly you, you, it's rare when you're gonna have to do something like that um, your main things are hover over component like hover over this guy hit home that's a quick way to get it done um, and now you know your your primitive creation will align to the work plane um, the thing about that though is you get kind of a uh, you don't necessarily always get the axis you want so for that reason I recommend selecting components um, and to demonstrate this, let me show you what I mean. So we can select polys like we did. Uh, we can say select these two polys, shift home. Okay, we get we get an average of those. Um, but if you need something more specific, like you need the center, you need the origin at a specific point. Okay, you can select a vertex and hit shift home. Now, 
one vertex doesn't give it enough to know the alignment. The first vert you select will place the origin of the scene there and align to the normal x, y, and z coordinates. So if I select the one vertex and then, well, let's select off axis, one and then another, and now I hit shift home. Okay, see what's happened? It's aligned uh, between those and placed the origin at the first vertex that I, uh, that I selected, okay? So again, if we center selected all, see it's that's the origin of your scene now, but it's aligned to uh, an average between the components that you selected. This guy's kind of handy. Let's scale them up and just move them off. Okay, and again, our tools are aligned to that work plane. All right, so by likewise, I could select this edge and I could say shift home, but do you see what's happened there? It's given me the center of uh, this edge as my origin. Okay, so that's something to, uh, well, let's see, did it? Should have. Yeah, it did. Okay, see, so that's something to keep in mind. You can use different component types to get the exact work plane alignment that you want. All right. Now, um, some of you might be saying, well, why don't I just use the element action center? So let's hit uh, Alt-Z, okay, and let's bring up our move tool, and let's click on this edge, okay? This is why, okay? It's going in the normal, the average normal direction of that edge. Um, so yeah, I could select this edge and hit the two key and then hit shift home, but see, it's the same. It, it gives you that same. It averages the normal of whatever selection you have. So then somebody might say to me, well, Derek, why don't you just bring up your element, or I'm sorry, your uh, element action center, bring up the move key or move tool, click on that polygon. Okay, now we've got the alignment that we want, but you can't get the gizmo where you want. So like, let's say you wanted to do some snapping operation or something. Um, you can't because element action center is going to place the gizmo always at the center of uh, the component that you select and align it to the normal of that component. All right. So the advantage of the work plane here is I could instead say, well, I want to snap this edge for whatever reason. I want to snap uh, this edge over to here. Okay but I need it in that specific alignment, even though it's for this example, it's gonna be kind of poor. But you get what I'm saying. Let's select that polygon, let's hit Shift Home, okay? Now we've aligned to that poly the same as uh, you would get with the Element uh, Action Center. Let's go ahead and clear that, Alt-Z. And now uh, let's select this edge, okay? And bring up the Move tool and see it's aligned to the work plane. And let's hit X for snapping. And now the, the advantage is, since we have no action center selected, as I've showed you in earlier videos, now we can put this gizmo any old place we want, okay, just by clicking. And with snapping on, it'll uh, actually look, you know, pre-highlight the component, um, you know, whatever component you want, okay. So let's uh, let's snap it, move it over here. Let's snap it to that edge, okay. Now let's grab it, and we can snap over here or something, okay. So, anyways, you see what I'm saying. Um, Sorry guys, my notifications there. Um, the work plane, if you can't get exactly what you want quickly with action centers, which is your first stop usually, and you're doing some advanced mirroring or something like that, then definitely, definitely try the work plane. So here's an example of that. Let's grab this vert, that vert, shift home, and now let's, uh, let's delete the cylinder. Let's get a cylinder that's actually aligned to the work plane off axis here. Hold control, we'll constrain that. Let's go ahead and uh, select these polygons, rotate tool, hold control to rotate, just because. And now uh, now let's mirror. I'm going to shift V, okay? Um, and we've got it auto-activating here in our tool pipe, okay? So you see the A, we've got that auto-activating, okay? So automatically it's going to look at an axis, okay? There's an angle in there, but you can set that to zero if you're getting some strange rotation. But anyways, you can see how valuable this is. If you're modeling off-axis, um, you know, I could have uh, I could have done this. I could have said, let's, uh, here, let me delete this. Let's go to center in the Z. And now, let's shift V. Boom. And with the merge vertices, which, uh, let me show you. With merge verts checked here, 
it's going to merge those objects together. Now you may have to get those center polygons out, but you can see, so if you're modeling half of something off, way off axis and you need to mirror it over, the work plane is, you want to set your work plane up and then uh, go ahead and do that mirror operation and that'll save you from having to model the whole object. This can be very uh, cumbersome in other 3D applications, but with the power of the work plane, it's very easy in Modo. So anyways, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, you can follow that link that I showed you here, uh, work plane. It'll go over how to um, set up work plane bookmarks where you can actually go ahead and uh, like say, I like this work plane, I want to use it later. You can assign that bookmark and then use that bookmark later once you've assigned it, okay? It has all kinds of other goodies in there um, and it'll show you about the offsetting manually and things like that as well. So in the next video, let's get to the round edge shader finally. We're going to start talking about the round edge shader, how to set up the material, and how to apply the material in the next lesson. Thank you.